Hello and welcome back. So we are trying to make things easier for us in the future so that uh, we put less code and do more. This is why we are creating these classes here and using object-oriented PHP. Anyway, so what I want here, the reason we are putting public here is because we want this validate function to be accessible from the outside of this class and not only used for this like here which is the case for that can only be used internally so what i actually errors should be public because we want to be able to know what the error what errors were generated here so let's change that to public like so all right so now let's go back to the sign up page and see what issues we're going to have if we try to use the validate function so the first thing we must do always before using a class is to create an instance this is exactly the same thing we did on the index page that's in the public folder here where we created an instance of an app and that's what runs it so what we'll go is to go to the sign up page and i'm just going to call this class anything and now because it's a users class i'll just call it user and say is equal to new user like this so remember that this user class is in the models folder, okay? So once we get the user class, now we can use the function that is inside that class and that function is validate, okay? So if we go back here, you will see this is the function here and this is why we made it public so that we can access it from outside the class, which is here in this case. We are not in the class, we are outside the class. So once we validate, this returns a true or false. So we can call it result is equal to uh, whatever the function returns, either true or false. And then we can check if true or false, then we go ahead and add the information to the table if everything went well. So for now, let's just try this. And also we'll get an error because data is required that we need to validate. So we need to pass in that information. In our case, the data is an array, and this is the post array, which contains the information that the user will post. Okay, so for those of you that do not know what post is, this is a global array that comes with PHP. So we're going to supply that array there. Okay, send it for checking. Now, let's try this and see what happens. So. If I refresh the page so there we go so this is the error that we get so let's try and fix it now this is a fatal error meaning that the script could not continue and it says uncaught error class user not found now the reason this class isn't found even though it's part of the folders thingy here is because it's really not included in the overall uh, flow of the application because if you remember correctly the application starts with index.php and then it goes to the init function the init file which loads all of these but from here you can see that we are not loading the user.php class anywhere here okay if we did add it here then that problem won't be there now the problem is we don't want to keep coming back to the init file to add everything that we add in the model let's say we add a new model we add 20 models then we have to add them here require 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 that's not good okay so we need a better way to do things because models are the variables of these are things that we change from project to project right you don't want to start coming back here to the core and start changing things in the core ideally we don't want to change anything in the core from project to project this stuff should remain the same the only things that should change are models controllers and views okay so how do we include the class without actually requiring it here so what we can do is right here in the init because this is the initializer per se um yeah we don't want to do things in the config either so right in the init here what i'm going to do is tell it to include a file if it doesn't find it so how do we do that we can uh, run a function called spl this comes with um with php 
So it's SPL auto load register. So what this function does is that it registers an auto loader. Now an auto loader is something that will load a file if it's not found. So what happens is uh, this function is triggered only if we try to instantiate a class that does not exist in the current flow. So the moment it gets to this, it's going to trigger this function. So all we need to do is capture and check what file was it looking for and then try to find it ourselves and import it. So in this case, what we need to do is add a function name that is going to uh, run when that is triggered. So we're registering a function here. So I'm going to say uh, my loader or something like this. So if I do this, then I'd have to create a function here and say my loader. Okay, something like this. And so here I'm just going to say echo something like here, just so we can see that we are getting to this point. So if I refresh now, refresh, resend, you see that it gets to the here part, which means this function is running. Now, if for some reason I remove this, I don't instantiate the class, let me hide this. You see that the here will not show and we won't get any error at all. That's because the that function only runs when there's a missing um, when there's a missing class that we want to to show here. Now, I I prefer instead of supplying the name of the function, I just prefer to actually put the function itself in here. So I can just cut this function from there and put it there, like so. Simple and straightforward. Now, this is what is known as an anonymous function. Now, since it's anonymous, it means it has no name. So we can just get rid of the name itself like that. So I get to save on being creative about names. So I'm just applying the function directly in there and then echo here. So let's just make sure that things are still working as intended. We still see the echo there, that's good. But then this thing supplies a class name Let's just call it class name. So any variable that you add here, you don't have to call it class name. You can call it A, it doesn't matter. But whatever first item you add here will be the, the name of the class it was trying to find. So let me just echo here, whatever the value there is. So if I now refresh, you see that instead of, uh, uh, what's this? Uh, the here, I get user. So it's telling me this is the class it was trying to find. So now, if we clever, uh, in a clever way, we did it in such a way that you see here, user class, and the file are named exactly the same, then it becomes easy now to find this file because we can just use the class name to find a file with the same name, and then we will know that's the, uh, the thing we're supposed to load. And then we will look in the models folder, okay? All right, so what we do here is in the init, we're just going to say, instead of echoing, we're just going to tell it to require a file. So require, that's the thing. So we have user here. If we do a concatenation, we add to that and just put .php, then we are telling it to require user.php. But we need to tell it what folder it's in, right? So let's put some more strings at the beginning. So here, remember that uh, we are running this in relation to the public folder. So dot dot slash app slash, and then we go to models. Or is it? Yes, models slash, and then user.php. So it should be able to find it now. So I'm going to refresh and resend. And there you see the error has disappeared because now it has managed to load this user class from here. But then we didn't capture the result of this. So what I'm going to say is let's copy. At the very top, I'll use var dump because it shows me the type of data as well. So let me dump that. Because let's say the result is true. If I show, it's going to write one. 
and then if the result is false it's going to write zero but sometimes it's an empty result true or false uh, i won't be able to see the result but var dump will tell me if it's a boolean and what value it is so if i refresh now and resend it shows me that it's a boolean the result and the result is true because really we didn't send any information to be evaluated there so what this means now is that if we add another model in here and try to access it, it will work as well because this function will find it. Okay, so save that and let's close the init page. Cool. Now we can add some validation. So for example, we want to know if uh, um, username, first name is empty, then we throw an error. So here I'm going to say if data so now data becomes this variable that we've sent in here right that we've sent there so we make sure that it's there so if we say empty if empty data we are looking for a very specific one which is first name if that is empty then let's add an error so we're just going to say these errors and we'll give it a memory location called first name. That way we can access the errors one by one if we need to on the other side. So these errors, first name is equal to, and um, uh, a first name is required. Okay, so this is the information that the user will see. So we're just giving them an error message. So we're adding to it, which means at this point, it will no longer be uh, empty. So if I do this, this should change to a false because first name we did not supply. So you see now it shows us that the validation didn't go well. But how do we see the result of that validation? Now remember that the result is stored in errors. And errors is inside the user class okay so it will keep that information in this instance so the instance is user validate so what i want instead is here to show some errors so uh, let me go down here and i will get user on this first one and do errors so I just want to see what the errors are inside this user class. Because if we had read these errors before we did a validation, the errors would be empty. But after we do a validation, there must be some errors, if any, were recovered. So let's refresh, resend. And you see now there's an array that's being uh, returned that says first name, a first name is required. Cool. Now let's go back here and let's add more validation. So we can just keep adding as many as we want. So here I will change all references to first name to last name, like so. Okay, so same thing with everything else. So let's do an email, uh, passwords, so let's come back here. So instead of doing a empty email, we can just validate the email directly. So to validate the email, okay, let me skip that for a second. Let's, let's go to username. We want a username, but actually username is kind of redundant. Let's see, your email. Uh, I don't think we need username here at all. We don't even have it here anyway. So I'll remove it. Let's go to the sign up view. Um, there is this. Let's remove this whole segment for username. And let's push this back to 12 so it fills the whole space. Let's refresh the page without sending in any data. Okay, and uh, what else? Yeah, so there's an email, password, password repeat, great. 
So let's come back to the user class. So username uh, is not there. So we've removed that, but let's keep it. Let's say we have email. Let's confirm a password. A password is required. Okay. And then we need to allow the person to accept the terms. So if we check here, we'll find that this input is named terms. So let's look for terms as well. So if empty terms, okay. So we can say, please accept the terms and conditions. Okay, so we have a password issue here email it's uh, email is required okay pretty good uh -huh. all right so let's see what errors come up when we hit sign up so these are the errors here first name is required last name terms uh, please accept the terms and conditions so those are the three first name last name terms so first name, last name, and terms. But these do not match the passwords. So we should check for that as well. So after this, we can just add one more here. Let's do that. Boom. So you can add as many checks as you want. It doesn't really matter. We'll even use some regular expressions eventually. So what we'll do here is... Um, Let's try if, let's do this. Copy the password thing. The other one is named retype underscore password. Okay, so if these are not the same, we have to make sure that they're exactly the same. So let's put three of those, not, not, two equal signs there. If these are not the same, then we can put it in password still and say uh, passwords do not match. Okay. So that the error message is different this time. It says uh, passwords do not match. Please accept terms and conditions, first name. So if I type something in the first name and last name, those should disappear. As you can see here, they've disappeared those errors. But passwords do not match and we haven't accepted the terms. So let's accept the terms, create account. Uh, for some reason, it didn't work. Okay, so let's come back and check what's going on here. Uh, where are the terms? That's the name, terms. Hmm. Okay, so the value is empty. That's why it's saying empty. So let's put a one on the value there so that at least it doesn't send empty information. So let's try again. I'll type something there, something there, and then uh, agree to the terms. Okay, so you see the only complaint was that passwords do not match and which is true. But if I add everything here and match the passwords as well, and then agree and then create you see that the errors are empty so there was no errors everything went accordingly to plan but you see one more problem we don't see that information here after the refresh so let's fix that real quick only this because this is a saved login all right i'll see you in the next video